The Lord be with you. We welcome everyone who's gathered here on this Independence Day weekend. Uh, we are celebrating our interdependence as Christians. As great as independence is and freedom in our country, it's even greater to have freedom in Christ and to be interconnected with one another in the body of Christ. So welcome everybody. Welcome to the visitors who are here. We will be having Sunday school and adult Bible class afterwards. So just to you're able to get to that that would be wonderful we're in a Bible class we're going through first to Corinthians first Corinthians but also ask that this week you would keep in your prayers uh, those going to the National Youth Gathering in Houston Texas we're leaving on Saturday next week we'll be returning on Wednesday we will be after uh, the sermon we're going to have a hymn and following that hymn we're going to have uh, a, a commissioning 
for those that are going to the National Youth Gathering. So for the adults and for the uh, young people that are be going, I know not everybody's here today, but for those that are here, we'll have you come forward and we'll do a, a commissioning there. So looking forward to that. Uh, should be a neat event. There's about 20,000 youth from around the country that'll be there in Houston, uh, warm Houston, Texas there. Uh, LWML, there's a note in there concerning LWML. Be sure to take a look at that. There's also a note in the back. We have a wonderful library here of books you can read during the summer if you want to read a book. And we got a church library and some titles were noted uh, in the back, in the insert that's in your bulletin. Are there any other announcements? We sing our opening hymn. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? With you. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear now the gospel applied directly to you. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. It's a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. Therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day to day pours out speech. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth and the word, words to the end of the world. Which comes out like a bridegroom leaving its chamber. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Isaiah reminds us that we are part of the new Jerusalem, and what a comfort that is. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her, enjoy all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I'll extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass. And the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Galatians, the sixth chapter. Paul tells us what we are called to do through the gospel in care for our brothers and sisters and in service to God. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he also reaps. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel reading. Holy Gospel. 
according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Jesus sends out his disciples, just as we are sent out into the world today to share the gospel of Christ. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town, and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your own town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me. And the one who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess the Apostles' Creed together. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dying, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
good to see everyone here. It's about 4th of July. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Well, I'm going to have two words today I want you to think about. When people ask you what was the children's message, you can think of these two words. The first word is going to be hard. The second word is going to be name. Let's say those two words on the count of three. Hard and name. One, two, three. Hard and name. Okay, so those are the two things. First of all, do you think it is easy to be a follower of Jesus? No, why not? Why don't you think it's easy to be a follower of Jesus? You don't know who you can't see him? Right, I got gotcha. you. All right, anything else? Yeah. Some people don't believe that around you. Okay, we're going to go through a couple of things about that here. Okay, so Jesus was teaching to his disciples there. You can see him teaching to his disciples, and he was going to, he picked out, we know about the apostles, there's 12, but here he picked out how many? 72. He says, you're going to be my followers. You're going to go out into this world and woohoo, woohoo, it's going to be easy, right? Ooh, not so much. All right. He says, we're going to go out into this world. He says, he says, uh, I'm going to send you out. There's going to be in a labor. Are, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. In other words, there's going to be lots of more people to reach, but pray that God would send more pastors and teachers and Christian parents and grandparents Pray for that all the time, okay? So, that's one thing he said to them. He says, when you go, don't take with you those things. What are those? Sandals, right? That seems weird. He says, I'm going to provide for you. Uh, I've got a hunch they might have taken them with, but he was trying to say, hey, I'm going to provide for your basic needs. He also says, don't take with you this. Backpack. A Bible time backpack, right? It's a sackcloth. That was to stuff. He's saying, you know what? It's, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to have put people in your world that are going to provide things for you with that. He says, I'm going to take you out. Now, those are sheep, but who else is with those sheep? Wolves. You think that's a good combination there? No. You don't want to have a herd? No, no, no. He says, there's going to be people that are going to be, you said it's tough to be, there's going to be wolves out there that aren't going to want what you have, okay? Oh, Jesus, I'm going to send you out as uh, sheep amongst wolves. Okay, let's, who could read that for me here? Go ahead. Yeah, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So remember, I had two words. What were those two words? You guys remember what the two words were? At the beginning? Hard and name. No matter how hard it gets to be a follower of Jesus, God has put his name on you and says, you are my own, and you are my own, and you are my own. And he says, that means you're going to be protected. When did God put his name on you? Do you guys remember? When you were born, more than baptized. Yeah, he says, I claimed it. So I'm going to keep you. Even if it's going to be tough out there, not easy to be a believer. Pray that there's more followers, uh, more uh, teachers of the faith out there. But I, your name is there. I've got you, got you because your names are written in heaven. Okay. Let us pray. Please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, it is hard to follow you. Remind us that you put your name on us. And you will hold on to us throughout our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We're going to sing a new hymn here. Uh, and so Janine's going to play through the first verse, and then we're going to sing it together. I believe it's 788 will be the hymn, and we're going to sing the first four verses. But you'll play through the verse first, and then we'll sing it after this. <laughs> Thank you. 
mercy and peace be unto each of you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is this section from Galatians chapter 6. As we celebrate Independence Day tomorrow, we're kind of starting it early, I suppose, most of us today. Even the signs are out. Happy Fourth of July already. And the freedom that we have as Americans. It is good for us to spend time in the book of Galatians, which speaks of freedom in an even grander way, in an even grander way, in a different way. It speaks of it as a freedom from sin, but also a freedom from the burden of thinking that you are connected to God and maintain this connection by keeping some sort of standard. Indeed, Galatians 2.21 puts it very, very well as it says these words, uh, If righteousness could be gained by the law, then Christ died for nothing. Christ died for nothing. Look in here for my clicker. I'm going to have you go ahead and move this along, Josh, okay? Um, it is an attachment freedom, not, by our, not to be our own person, but it's a freedom that comes from being attached to Christ. Um, sometimes we think of freedom as being free from everybody else, and just being by ourselves. The Bible calls that enslavement, if we're just to ourselves. But if the Son sets us free, Jesus, we are free indeed. And while we rejoice as Americans in life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and the freedom that we have in this country, we especially rejoice in the freedom from sin and death, the power of the devil, and the freedom from being bound to be connected to God through some sort of a standard. This is Galatians' freedom. This is the freedom that we rejoice in. So this means we live in a different way. And so today we're going to look at Galatians chapter 6 about how we are to live an outward way, not an independent way, but an interdependent way how we're connected to God, interdependent on Him, and also interdependent on one another. And I want to emphasize as we go through these ways that we are to live in an outward way, uh, how we have first been called. In other words, He brought us out of darkness into His marvelous life, called us as His own, and keeps us in His kingdom. This outward living, living is not the cause of our freedom but it is the response to those that are already set free. So let me bring forth four ways from the section of Galatians that calls us to live interdependent ways. And the first is this. We are called to live in humble restoration, outwardly towards other, seeking to restore them. And the text says this. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgressions, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness, keeping watch on yourself, lest you be tempted. Every once in a while, you hear stories of dolphins or tuna being caught in this big, massive net, you know, in the oceans. And... Uh, they're just kind of caught there. And we don't usually think when this happens, you know, if the dolphins had any sense to themselves, they would, you know, swim around these particular gnats. Or we don't think that, you know, if a, 
if a whale gets beached on the, on, the, on the side of the beach, that we don't say, you know, if only you didn't swim so close. We usually have a sense of compassion uh, for them as they get this way. Uh, that we can, how can we help get these creatures out of their predicament? I think this is a good way to think about those who are caught in sin. By the way, there's a kind of a, a double thing here that goes on. We know the phrase, judge not, ye shall not be judged, and so we're careful with that. But then you have this phrase that I think also needs to be put in the same light. If anyone is caught in sin, you are spiritual, uh, should look to restore them. So to be involved in their life. Now, one thing we could do, that's not what we should do, is throw up our hands and say, you know, what are we going to do? We can't do anything anyway. It says, you who are spiritual, who have the spirit of Christ, should restore them. And the word for restore here is the word for uh, a broken bone, putting a broken bone in place. When we see a believer caught in sin, the world would say you kind of ignore them or it's not as big of a deal, but rather we are called to engage them. And there's some interesting parameters Paul puts here around it. He talks about it as a spirit of gentleness, to keep watch on yourself unless you also be tempted. Uh, to be very careful about this, that it doesn't make one haughty being over the person, uh, but also to be concerned about those caught in sin. I can remember some years back going to a, a youth uh, event. Uh, it was a kind of a conference or a time that we were together. We spent time together all, all weekend. And towards the end of the week, they had this time where there was individual confession and absolution. And yes, we have that in the Lutheran Church, too. Uh, so these youth would sit down with whoever the clergy was there, and they would uh, have a chance to confess. And then uh, I would to, uh, the pastor was to uh, proclaim forgiveness to them individually. A lot of these youth had just come out of uh, a couple, first couple years of college. And I just remember what a, what a glorious uh, freedom this brought to many of these youth as they heard that their sins were cast as far as the east is from the west as they heard uh, that if the sun sets you free you shall be free indeed and to see the relief the freedom that this bring of being restored again is one of the great joys i've had in my ministry as i saw this taking place so we're to restore those called to restore those caught in sin Second, we are called to bear burdens. This is what the text says. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. There's a little girl. Uh, she was probably six years old, about six years old. And she had a little brother and she was real proud of her brother. And he was just about a year old. But she liked to carry him around lift him up and carry him. When you get to be about a year old, I mean, you're almost walking, certainly crawling, you're getting pretty big. So he was about, you know, three quarters her size and she would be lugging him around. Somebody went to her and she says, boy, isn't he heavy to carry around? And she said, he's not heavy. He's my brother. He's my brother. In other words, her relationship had a greater importance than the physical difficulty of bearing her brother. Too often we are like Cain in the Bible. Remember that when he asked after his, uh, he had, uh, uh, with Abel, I murdered his bro brother Abel. God came to him and he said, am I my brother's keeper? Folks, as people who have been called to the faith and saved by grace alone, who become members of one another, and we are interconnected, interdependent on one another, uh, we are our brother's keeper and this fulfills the law of Christ the traditional marriage vows illustrate this very well as husband and wife promise to stay with each other in sickness and in health in effect they are promising to bear each other's burdens for struggling about living out the faith just open your eyes look around find out if there are anyone around you with burdens and believe me and you know this too they are everywhere we won't have to look far my fellow believers we are not only called to do this but we've also been blessed to be recipients of having our burdens lifted 
God has brought people into our lives to help us, to guide us. And indeed, we're here in church. We're gathered around this word and his meal so that we can also have our burdens absorbed by this Jesus. And he loves to do it. So we're to bear burdens. We've also received that burden bearing in our lives. 2 Corinthians 7 says it very well. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, bears our burdens, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Restore those who are caught in sin, and we are called to bear each other's burdens. Third, according to Galatians, we are to live interdependent lives, outward lives, as we are called to sow in the Spirit. Here's what the text says. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whoever, whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows into his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Now, sowing is planting. That's just another term for planting back then. And the sowing in the flesh or in the spirit has one of those what goes around comes around kind of aspects to it, right? If you sow in the flesh, you'll reap corruption. And that's not good, of course. There's a, there's a false teaching that they were dealing with in the Galatians, for the Galatians, and actually throughout the New Testament, even today we deal with it. The fancy word for it is called antinomianism. You don't have to remember that fancy word, but it's simply saying that because Christ has set us free uh, and we are not saved by the law, we are now free to do whatever, to indulge in the sinful nature the law has no bearing in our life. You could summarize this as saying not a freedom from sin, but a freedom for sin. He responds to this and says, no, don't, God is not mocked. The Christian life is a life of repentance, not a life of self-indulgence. He describes this as a life of the flesh. Galatians 5 describes this, sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, drunkenness, and the like. If you sow in the flesh, it will not only not be helpful to others, but it will ultimately destroy you. But the opposite is to sow with the Spirit, and that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. Now, it's interesting about planting, and this is just kind of an obvious thing, but when you plant, you don't see the results right away. It can take a long time to see the results. This is true if you sow in the flesh or you sow in the Spirit. And sometimes as the plants arise, we know this in very hot days, uh, it can be wilting there. And what does the Spirit do? It waters us with the forgiveness of sins and life, and it helps us to go again. But the point is this. He goes on and says that we don't always know and see the impact that the sowing, especially in the Spirit, has. Which is why he writes this. Do not become weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap. Do not become weary in doing as you have been called to do for the sake of others, because in due season you will reap. Fourth point. We are called to boast in the cross of Christ. Here's what he writes. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Notice he doesn't boast that he's been good at this restoring thing, that he's been good at this bearing burden kind of thing, that he's been good at the uh, sowing in the spirit kind of thing. No, he boasts in his Lord Jesus the cross, by which he has everything. But notice the way it's put here by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It's a strange way to think of it this way, to which the world has been crucified to me. What does that mean? Crucifixion means death. And in Christ Jesus, you and I 
get to die to sin. Sin isn't just covered over or pushed to the side. It's destroyed. And if something dies, it has no power over us. Sin dies on the cross. And something that dies cannot rule over us. One of the lies for the addict is the addict believes that whatever he or she is addicted to, they need that in order to just function. Die to sin. Romans 6.11 puts it this way. Consider yourself dead to sin and alive to Christ, God in Christ Jesus. That's the guilt, the shame, all that may be around me, but I'm dead to sin. I've been crucified to that. What's happened to Christ has been given also to me. Jesus' death and resurrection delivered through baptism means we have died. And that's a good thing. All that is left is the one who lives, Christ Jesus, and those of whom he attaches himself to. You and I, my fellow believers. This Lord, this Lord who brings freedom, has found us. And so we are called to live interdependent lives. Trusting in him, outward lives towards one another. As we are called to... Restore, bear burdens, sow in the Spirit, and spend our lives and unto eternity boasting in Christ our Lord. To Him be glory and praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the next few verses of that new hymn we've been singing. 788. 788. This time I'll invite those who are going to the National Youth Gathering to come forward at this time. Katie, you can come forward. Too. Not everyone is able to be here today. Why don't we come on up and we'll stand right up here. Um, but we have seven youth, five adults, and then oh, Katie, you're going to be a young adult volunteer, right? There too, so great. Brothers and sisters in Christ, next Saturday, seven youth, five adults. Katie and uh, uh, I think Zach, too, is going to be a young uh, adult volunteer. Are joining almost 20,000 LCMS Lutheran, uh, youth and adults in Houston, Texas, for a five-day gathering of worship, Bible studies, servant events, workshops, numerous activities, and along with that, very little sleep. The theme this year is titled, In All Things, based on Colossians 1, 16 to 20. These verses show the power and love of Christ in all things. So we're going to do something together with youth here. Uh, all of us are going to join in this together. I'm going to read this section of scripture. As I do this, I would invite everyone here, adults, youth, congregational members, to say the phrase, all things, when I pause in this reading. So it's two words. All, all things. I'm going to pause as I do this reading, and then you can say together all things. There's going to be one, two, three, four, I think five times you're saying this. <laughs> Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, were created through him and for him, and he is before and in him hold together and he is the head of the body the church he is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent 
For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Oh, here ends our reading. I didn't mean to pause at the end there, but yeah, that's it. So you get the point. That's the theme that's going to be throughout the uh, youth gathering in all things. So I would invite the adult leaders to respond here. Do you intend to serve as adult leaders at the 2022 National Youth Gathering in Houston, Texas, faithfully reflecting the love of Christ to each other and to the youth, so that the Christ who is over all things may be glorified? If so, answer, I will. To the participants, do you intend to use this time to grow in the grace and knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ to serve those who are placed around you so that in all things Christ may be glorified? If so, answer, I will. To the congregation, will you pray for these youth as they attend the youth gathering and the adults, especially those who are from this congregation, that in all things Christ may be glorified? If so, answer, I will. Therefore, sent by our Lord Jesus Christ, who is over all things, who created all things, and who holds all things, I commission you to be representatives of this congregation at the 2022 LCMS Youth Gathering in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the freedom and forgiveness that Jesus provides, established in him and by his will, remain unmoved in the hope of the gospel. Amen. Come to your seats. The congregation is invited to rise for prayer. We also have a prayer request on behalf of the family of Rosemary Bomarito. Uh, she passed away this Friday. Uh, this is the cousin to Sandy Ressler. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for calling us to a life of freedom in Christ, a life of trust that is focused outwardly on those around us, a life of interdependence. Help us to restore those who are caught in sin to bear burdens, to sow in the spirit, and to give all credit uh, and boast in the cross of Christ by whom the world has been crucified to us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, as we celebrate uh, the fourth tomorrow, we pray for our country where there is disunity, bring unity. Bless our nation, guide our leaders, use our military personnel to assist in providing a stable world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Grant them a sure hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Especially we pray for the family of Becky Schneider, the family of Rosemarie Bomarito, uh, as they uh, recently went home to their Savior. Give them hope and peace uh, as they grieve the earthly loss of these they love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful Lord, your son sent the 72 with a charge to enter homes to proclaim peace and declare the coming of your kingdom. Grant our homes to be places in which your peace dwells, that husbands and wives love and honor one another, that children are nurtured in the fear and faith toward your name and your kingdom to come among us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Help those in our communities who are dealing with economic hardships and open our eyes to their needs and use us as a church to serve those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Bless those attending the National Youth Gathering in Houston next week. Grant that it be a week of growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion in your Son, you have borne the burdens of all mankind. Look with mercy upon those with health issues. Especially we pray for Dale, Allison, Andrew, Jean Lee, Susan, Scott, David, Sean, Elaine, Chris, Sandra, Kathleen, Dewey, Peggy, and those we now bring silently to your gracious throne. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, keep our hearts from greed that we may joyfully support your church and those who serve us in your name. Keep us from pride of heart that delights more in what we do than in what you have done. Accept with our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving the tithes and offerings we bring before you. Lord, in your mercy. God of Israel, as your people of old drank and were satisfied your abundant comfort shown to Jerusalem, may we likewise be satisfied to eat and drink of your son's body and blood given for our comfort today. Lord, in your mercy. 
Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In these last days you have poured out your Holy Spirit on your church that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people that faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son, we may go forth to proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. You may be seated. In this body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has borne all your burdens, may this strengthen you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in his peace and in his joy. thanks to you, Almighty God, that once again you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. 